Challenge Lesson, Compound Inequalities. In this video, you will learn how to read a compound inequality graph, solve a given compound inequality statement, and graph it yourself. Follow along with the page that says Challenge Topic Compound Inequalities. We will go through several of the examples on the front page, and then you can try some on your own on the back. Compound inequalities are inequalities that consist of two inequalities connected by an AND or an OR statement. Let's look at two examples together. We have 12 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 14. This could go with a real life situation such as the ages of students at Pollard Middle School. The students in Pollard are between the ages of 12 and 14, including the 12 and the 14. If I wanted to graph this, I would need to number my number line. I see that I'll have a closed circle at 12 and a closed circle at 14. And my solutions are 12, 14, and every point in between. So if I think about it, all of these numbers in here, including 12 and a half, 13, 13 and a half, 13 and a quarter, all of those are included in my solution. So and statements often have something that looks like this, where it's a bar. Example 2 shows x is less than 12, or x is greater than or equal to 65. This could be something such as getting a discount in a movie. So somebody who's below the age of 12, not including 12, or someone that's 65 or over might get a discount. I numbered my number line going by tens, and I see that I will want an open circle at 12 and a closed circle at 65. The points that I'm including will be points such as the numbers 1 years old, 2 years old, 10 years old, so I know that I want all the points that are less than 12. I'll also include the points such as 66, 67, 80, etc. So I'll have an arrow greater than 65, including 65. In general, our OR statements are arrows going in two opposite directions because we want to include solutions that are either less than a given number or greater than a given number. However, our AND statements are usually between two numbers, so it has to be both be greater than 12 and less than 14, or greater than or equal to 12 and less than or equal to 14, which leaves a much more limited set of values. Now let's read compound inequalities that are already graphed. When I look at number 3, I see that my solutions are everything that are greater than or equal to negative 2 and also less than 5. So I have two ways to write this. I can either write that x is greater than or equal to negative 2 and, writing the word and, x is less than 5. Or I can write it like this. x is between, so I want a number that's smaller and then a number that's bigger x is between negative 2 and 5. Now, since it's a closed circle, I'll add the line underneath here. This is saying that negative 2 is smaller than my x, and x is smaller than my 5. Those are two different ways to write it. Looking at my next example, I see that it will be an OR statement, because I have a set of points that are less than negative 2, and a set of points that are greater than 5. However, nothing can be both less than negative 2 and greater than 5. So I have x is less than or equal to negative 2, or x is greater than 5. I have to write the or in between, otherwise it would not be correct. Now that we know how to graph and read a graph for a compound inequality, let's solve them. So my first statement says 16 is less than 5x plus 1 is less than 31. I'll show you two ways to do this. One way to do it would be to draw two lines down, one from each inequality symbol, and use our inverse operations on all three sides. So if I'm subtracting one from the middle, I have to also subtract one on the left and subtract one on the right. That means I have 15 is less than 5x is less than 30. Then I divide by 5 on all three sections again, so I get 3 is less than x is less than 6. I graphed it with two open circles connecting all the points between 3 and 6 because my solutions have to be both bigger than 3 and less than 6. Let's skip down to number 7 so I can show you a different way to do the AND statements. 
A different way is to split it into two inequalities. So I have 3 is less than negative 1 half x minus 1, and I have negative 1 half x minus 1 is less than or equal to 4. Rather than do it in three sections, I can think of this as the inequality that goes from here to here, and the other inequality that goes from here to here. The important thing to remember is that whether you split it or do it in two sections, you have to flip the inequality on both sections. So I added 1 on both of my inequalities, and then I had negative 1 half x. So when I multiplied by 2, negative 2, I had to remember to move the negative, but also to flip or reverse this inequality symbol on both of them. So I have negative 8 is greater than x, and x is greater than negative 10. If I choose to split it like this, I have to remember to write and between them. I can also choose to put this into one statement. So I have my x, and I always go like this, and I write the number that is smaller. So in this case, negative 10 is smaller than my x, and I have negative 8. Keep in mind that negative 8 is a larger number than negative 10, so this inequality makes sense, and I would connect the bars between negative 10 and negative 8, just like I did above, making sure that my number line goes in the right direction. Solving an OR statement, it's already split into two for us, so we're simply doing essentially two problems and then graphing them on one graph. I'm going to jump down and do number 8. So I have negative 4x is less than or equal to 20, so I'll divide both sides by negative 4, and I get x is greater than or equal to negative 5. And on this one, since I have the opposite of x is greater than 8, I'll divide both sides by negative 1, so I have x is less than negative 8. Keep in mind, I have to write an OR between them in my answer. When I graph this, I number my number line, then I put a cl closed circle above negative 5 and an open circle above negative 8, and my arrows go outwards because I want all of the points that are greater than or equal to negative 5 and all the points that are less than negative 8. If I asked you if a certain number was a solution, it would be anything that's shaded in. So negative 9 is a solution to this. Negative 100 is a solution to this. Negative 7 is not a solution to this compound inequality. 0 is a solution to this compound inequality. It's anything that satisfies this statement or this statement, as opposed to an AND statement where it has to satisfy both pieces of it, even if it's written separately. Hopefully you, you noticed my mistake. Unfortunately, I can't add something in the middle. So over on example number 7, I didn't follow through with the OR equal to part, so this should be negative 10 is less than or equal to x is less than negative 8, so I need to fill in that circle. Sorry. Let's talk for a minute about some special cases. This is not on your paper. If I was given this, negative 4x is less than or equal to 20, or negative x is greater than negative 8, I would solve it as follows. I get x is greater than or equal to negative 5, or x is less than 8. But something weird happens. When I graph the inequality x is greater than or equal to negative 5, I fill in an arrow going to the right here. And when I graph x is less than 8, I fill in an arrow going this way. But keep in mind that these arrows go forever. That means that this arrow on my left keeps going like this. This arrow on my right keeps going like this. So every single number that exists, every real number, is a solution to this because all numbers are either greater than or equal to negative 5, that includes some of my negatives and all of my positives, or they're less than 8, because that includes all of the negative numbers. Similarly, what if I had this statement at my, as my final answer? x is greater than 0 and x is less than negative 1. There's not a single number that is both greater than 0, that means it's positive, and less than negative 1. So therefore, this would be no solution. Keep those in mind as you solve, but most of the examples that we will do will not look like either of these. Now's your chance to try some. These should be on the back of your paper. Come in tomorrow with questions and I'd be happy to answer them.